Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some absolutely amazing and downright outstanding changes to Yuzu Emulator in relation to its 3D rendering of Super Mario Odyssey. Now obviously not only Super Mario Odyssey is affected, but this game is by far the most requested game for testing on my channel at this point in time. So the footage you're watching right now is of Super Mario Odyssey running on Yuzu Canary 1315 as you can see in the top of my title bar. For you people who have been keeping track of all of the rendering changes and all of the different videos I've made on its improvements, you will already be aware that previous to these canary builds only two or three days ago this rendered cutscene was a complete mess. Basically all that we would see was garbled colors and we wouldn't be able to make out anything that was happening in the scene apart from some of the sounds. So only two days after they fixed this rendered 3D cutscene and many of the other 3D elements in lots of games on this emulator they have given us another absolutely enormous improvement to render quality. This has come in the form of implemented 3D textures for the emulator itself. Let's switch over to a version of the emulator that is running those new changes. So check it out, they have given us an almost perfect colour matched representation of Super Mario Odyssey on a Yuzu emulator. Now obviously you can see that all of the textures have this weird sheen or shine to them. This is due to the fact that at this point in time they are using a cube map implementation that is slightly wrong which gives us this weird shiny quality to all of our character models. Now you may also have noticed that in that rendered cutscene I was basically getting locked to 59 or 60 frames per second at all times. If I in fact unlimited my frame rate, I would be getting well over 140 frames per second in any of these cutscenes, meaning that for lower end CPU users that aren't using as good a CPU as I am, if anyone doesn't know I'm using an 8700K, they are going to have much, much better performance using these changes once they are implemented into the Canary builds of Yuzu. Now, even though I am, yes, using an 8700K CPU, this CPU is still only only using one of its cores out of all six cores and 12 threads that are available to it. This means that it's not really taking advantage of the power of an 8700K, meaning that basically any modern to semi-modern CPU that's able to get to 4.5 to 4.8 GHz will basically give you a very, very similar performance to what you are seeing if you pair it with an NVIDIA GPU. So what we're now going to do is we are going to take some comparisons and see just how much the rendering and performance has increased in many kingdoms that suffered with severe graphical rendering issues and performance problems. This right here is Cap Kingdom. When we first load into it, we are right beside the Odyssey. When we transition over to this new build of Yuzu with 3D textures correctly implemented, you can very, very clearly see just how much the render and image quality has improved in game. Now if any of you guys checked out my video where I covered the last rendering improvements, you would also have seen in that video that when recording gameplay footage, I was getting an extremely severe performance penalty for recording gameplay while playing the game. In these new builds, I am still suffering from that issue, but since the performance has increased so much even in the last 2-3 to three days on Yuzu since I made that video, the game is even super playable even when recording for me. Now when I'm not recording, I generally get between 10, 15 and at some points in time 20 frames per second more than you are currently seeing on screen right now. I generally performance wise sit somewhere between around 50 and 70 to 80 FPS depending on the kingdom. Now this flashing redness that you can see on screen and is also seen in many other kingdoms is also currently being worked on by two of the main developers of Yuzu so hopefully that will also be fixed very very soon. Another issue that you're 100% going to be noticing throughout the gameplay in this video are these little stuttery pauses. Now these are simply caching of shaders into your GPU driver. Even in the past few weeks they have gotten a lot better in any games on Yuzu and hopefully they will be improved once again in future. So moving back to some extreme render improvements, let's quickly take a look at the inside of Cap Tower. 
In a similar circumstance to the outside of Cap Kingdom, you are also going to see an absolutely enormous render and performance improvement in this area. Transitioning over into this new 3D texture build, it is quite simple to see just how much of an improvement we are getting in this new version. Especially so when you pair these new rendering fixes with all of the softlock and hardlock fixes I showed in my last video about Yuzu, these improvements are just made even more impressive. So an area a lot of you would be familiar with if you've watched a multitude of my Yuzu improvement and performance enhancement videos would be a Cloud Kingdom, one of the least performance demanding areas in Super Mario Odyssey, at least at this point in time. So let's first of all bring in the old familiar picture and visual representation that you're used to, this weird green hued version of Cloud Kingdom in Mario Odyssey. Transitioning over to this new 3D texture implementation, you can already see just how much of an improvement we have seen in this kingdom especially. Now, as I previously said, Cloud Kingdom is pretty much the least performance demanding area in all of Super Mario Odyssey, at least on Yuzu at this point in time, meaning that almost all of the time when I am not getting that weird stutter that I previously mentioned, I am going to be practically locked to 60 frames per second all of the time. If I in fact unlocked my frame rate in this area, I would most likely be running at well over 100 frames per second, meaning, as I already said, people with lower tiered CPUs and GPUs will be getting very very playable frame rates in areas just like this one and when you factor in the point that Yuzu is so new and so unoptimized we can expect big big things from this emulator in the future. So let's continue with our render improvements overview and move along to another kingdom that has seen an absolutely enormous render improvement. As with many of the other kingdoms I have already showcased, Moon Kingdom is another kingdom that suffered extremely so with this weird yellow hue over all of its textures. When we transition once again over to this new 3D texture implementation build, you can once again see how much cleaner the image quality is and how much better all of the textures are now rendered. Now you will see my frame rate probably at points now drop down into the high 20s to low 30s. The reason my performance is tanking in this area is due to the fact that this 2D stage in Super Mario Odyssey is extremely experiencing a vertex explosion. Now, pretty much every time you see Vertex Explosion in Super Mario Odyssey and practically any game to be honest, you are going to see a much lower performance. As you can see, when I look away from it, my frame rate jumps up to the low to mid 50s and when I look back towards the area that contains this 2D stage, you are going to see my performance absolutely tank down into the mid to low 30s. This vertex explosion in these 2D stages makes them practically unplayable and uncompletable even though several people over on the Yuzu Discord have indeed completed them in live streams pretty much just for the fun of doing so. Unfortunately, in my experience and in my opinion, I would have to say that these stages at this point in time are 100% not completable and it is just absolutely no fun to even play them at this point in time. Hopefully sooner or later these vertex explosion issues, especially so in these 2D stages, will be fixed because for one thing it absolutely destroys performance in practically every level that contains them and for two, many of these kingdoms and stages are not even completable without going through these 2D areas. So let's move on to our second to last kingdom to take a look at render improvements. Let's now take a look at Dark Side Kingdom. So Dark Side Kingdom is another one of those kingdoms that has a very very good performance. You can see I'm getting almost a locked 60 frames per second in this area. However, when we transition over to our improved 3D texture build, you can see just how much of an improvement we've seen in this kingdom. Performance wise, I generally stay locked to 60 FPS regardless of what I do in this area and when paired with all of these render improvements we have seen, it is just a very very playable experience. So let's move on to my final kingdom for testing in Super Mario Odyssey, one of the most odd looking kingdoms I have to say in the entire game, Luncheon Kingdom. 
So this kingdom was probably one of the least accurate representations, at least graphically, that we were seeing in Super Mario Odyssey on Yuzu Emulator. Transitioning over once again to this 3D textures build, you can see just how much our render quality has improved in this area. Now, unfortunately, in Luncheon Kingdom at least, it has extreme levels of vertex explosion. This is exactly what you are seeing on screen with these weird and strangely rendered blocks and things that are just spiraling and moving all over the screen. As I previously showed you in Moon Kingdom, when this happens, our performance is going to absolutely tank. You can see that when I look this way, where we're getting no vertex explosion, we get around 48 to 50. And when we look back towards, we're getting vertex explosion. You can see it on the ground right now. We drop down to the mid to low 30s and high 20s. So what is left in order to make Super Mario Odyssey playable and fully completable on Yuzu Emulator? To be honest, there's not really Really that much that they are going to need to fix in order to at least make this game somewhat playable and to allow users to completely finish the game. The most major thing at this point in time that they are going to need to change is when you enter into any sub area in any of the kingdoms in game, you are basically going to lose all of your rendered graphics. Everything is basically going to stop rendering and you're not going to be able to fully complete those areas. As I've already said in this video though, there are several people working on those issues even right now, so hopefully all of those problems will be solved sooner rather than later. So as I said at the start of this video, these changes to 3D rendering not only affect Super Mario Odyssey, but they also affect several other games on this emulator, and since obviously the Nintendo Switch is still in its infancy, at least game-wise, these will also affect games that are going to be launching on this platform in the future. To give you a very good example of just one game that has also significantly benefited from these changes, let's take a quick look at ARMS. So in our first bit of footage, we have ARMS running on Canary 1315, as I said, the latest Canary at time of making this video, and you can see that we have a very similar render bug that we had in many other games on the emulator, with textures not being rendered correctly. Moving across to this exact same screen in this 3D texture fixed build, and you can see just how much render quality has also improved in this title. Not only are we getting almost perfectly rendered character models, but we also have fantastic performance being locked to 60 frames per second at all times in this screen. Moving across into some gameplay, you can also see that we have seen a significant both performance and render quality increase being locked to almost 60 frames per second when we are not experiencing the weird shader stutter which I already explained. So there we have it guys, an almost full overview of all these rendering and graphical upgrades that we have seen in these past few days on Yuzu, this Nintendo Switch emulator. If you want to make sure that you are as up to date as possible on this and many of the other emulators I cover on the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell if you have already done so. If you want to help with the development of this Switch emulator, you can find a link down in the description to their Patreon. Again, at the end of this video, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my own Patreon supporters. If you want to help to support the channel, get your name featured on this list as well as a host of other benefits over on the BSOD Gaming Discord, make sure to head on over to my Patreon and pledge to support. As always, you will find a link to my Patreon down in the description of this video. So once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.